I'm going to go over the final four matches for the NCAA tournament for Division I women's volleyball. And first of all, the one seed Nebraska defeated the one seed Pitt three sets to nine. I'm not just going to go over like, is it three sets to nine, three sets to one, three sets to two for both these scores. I'm going to go over individual scores as well as stats. And before y'all think it was a blowout by any means between Pitt and Nebraska, it wasn't really. I mean, 25-20, 25-23, the first two sets were close. But 25-17 in the third. So the Pitt was down multiple set points slash match points, and they tried to make a run for it. They tried to extend the match a little bit at a time. They just couldn't get to a fourth. As you can tell, they were just down too much too early in that match. And Pitt finishes the season now at 29-5, and which that's a solid record, and 16-2 and in the ACC. Now I'm going to go over like the individual stats here. And Pitt had 36 kills with 22 attacking errors on 102 attempts. Mm, not great. 137 hitting percentage. He did have 35 assists. One, like, error, assist error, which is like a double touch. Three service aces, eight service errors, 16 assisted blocks. I mean, as in, like, 18 blocks, basically. If you want to go that way. With two blocking errors and 41 digs and five receiving errors. It's not... Yeah, and second of all, Nebraska's now 33-1, and and their only loss was to Wisconsin. And I'm going to get to them in a second, and 19-1 and in the Big Ten. Now, Nebraska had 39 kills with 15 attacking errors on 98 attempts, so a 245 hitting percentage. So that was better in both of those categories than Pitt. It makes sense why they won partially. But here's another thing. 38 assists, 5 service aces, 6 service errors. So they were better in both of those categories. You want as few errors as possible and more service aces. Though it was not as many as service errors but in the match. But you get the whole point. They even had 5 solo blocks and 20 assisted blocks in the match. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah. You, when you have not any blocks against you, it's hard to win. 39 digs, which is not as many as Pitt, but they didn't have any, like, as many few receiving errors. So they only had three in a match. So, yeah. That was not the shocking result here. It really wasn't the shocking one. The other one was a little bit more shocking, slightly, because the 2 C Texas defeated the one seed Wisconsin three sets to one and first of all the set scores were Texas 25-22 that was close second set Wisconsin 25-20 but the next two 25-13, 25 25-16. 25 so yeah, not really that, not that good by Wisconsin and good job for Texas in all this. And I'm going to start with the losing side of things first. Wisconsin have 42 attack uh, uh, kills. With 15 attacking errors, which is not that bad, 121 attempts, though, 223 for the match. 40 assists, 1 assist error, 4 service aces, but 11 service errors? When you have that many service errors, it's hard to win a, a match. You did have, like, 11 receiving errors as well, so that didn't help your cause. 44 digs, you did have, like, 18 assisted blocks, which is basically 9, plus 1 solo block. Still not many, not as many blocks. And 4 blocking errors. 
Now, Texas, on their hand, 57 kills with 20 attacking errors, though. So that that's more attacking errors than they probably wanted. Probably. But that was 135 attempts, though. So they have more attempts. And that's a 274 hitting percentage. 55 assists. One assist error, which was like a double touch. 11 service aces. And six of those came from Madison Skinner. And that's a new record in the Final Four slash National Championship. That many service aces in a match. That's impressive. Seven service errors. So they served the ball better, as you could tell. Four receiving errors. 56 digs. And they only had six block team blocks for the match, which that's basically 12 assisted blocks. And one blocking error and blo one ball handling error. So they made fewer errors. And even though they won the match, they got out blocked. But at the end of the day, when you're serving that well, it's pretty hard to, to lose. I mean, that's the thing. And Wisconsin finishes the season at 30 and four, which is nothing to sneeze at. And I look at the overall rec record as well. I mean, it's the Big Ten record. They were thirty, yeah, thirty and four now. Okay, I don't know why it's taking a little bit of time on this, but I, I get it real, real quick here. I promise, I'm trying. Seventeen and three in the Big Ten, so my bad. I don't know why it took so long, but. Either way, a very solid season. Obviously, both the Pitt and Wisconsin won the more, but you got to play good enough to win. That's the thing. All about it is, where wins the championship? It's actually on December seventeenth at 2 p.m. Central Time on ABC. I don't know if Madison Skinner is going to have the same number of service aces as in that upcoming match compared to this national championship, but she's been there before. Not just last year at Texas either, but when she was at Kentucky. I mean, that's the thing, and Nothing would shock me about the match because I could totally see the way on this because, look, Texas is playing really good right now compared to the regular season. They almost lost to Baylor. They almost lost to TCU. They got swept by Kansas State who didn't even make the NCAA tournament. Of course, we know they lost the first match of the year. They did. So, As for overall record right now, Texas is 27-4 and 17-1 and in the Big 12. And we know Nebraska's only lost one time in the Big 10. And they're 19-1 and, I mean and in the conference now. And 33-1 and overall. So they're really a better team than Wisconsin. But then again, Wisconsin beat them. But then again, Nebraska beat them the falling time. I mean, they beat them once, too. So it was 50 50. We're going to have to wait and see what happens here. So, anyways, if you like this content, like and subscribe, button, and see you guys later. On the road with 600 subscribers, of course, the ultimate goal is 1,000 or more. So, we make money out this. Of course, liking the video, commenting the video really helps the YouTube algorithm so more people can see it. Sharing the video does help as well, so more people can watch. And if you're watching and not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It's free. Hit the notification bell as well. And I, there's a question now. Who should be...
the number three team in the country. Wisconsin or Pitt? Pitt lost closer in terms of the number of points lost by than Wisconsin, but Wisconsin forced a four-set match. So it's really a debate up to y'all on that. And I'm going to have to contemplate over that now because of this. And we're going to know who finishes number one and who finishes number two. After the national championship match, I will give my top ten. And not just recap the national championship and overall record for both of these teams, both Texas and Nebraska here. I want to, I want to give like top ten and as well as like teams outside looking in. Eventually, the new poll is going to come out the final one of the season, and I'm going to just go over that separately. That way I don't have to mess with it. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's based on, mine is based on postseason results. Like who made it to the Sweet 16? Who made it just to the Elite Eight? Who made it to the Final Four? Who's in a national championship match and then determine the winner is going to be number one, the loser is going to be number two. And all this. So just keep an eye out for that.